This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got Joelle in the card with me. You are the Executive Director of the Lanark County Community Justice. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We've got so much to talk about. You're going to come back next week, aren't you? I'm going to come back next week. <laughs> now let's talk about what, what is it you do? What it does Lanark County Community Justice do? So our core program is diversion. So we receive referrals from the OPP and Smith Falls Police and, or from the Crown Attorney's Office when someone has um, done something uh, that's worthy of a charge. And so rather than go through the traditional justice system, they divert the charge. And we do a process called restorative justice. And restorative justice is bringing together the victim, the accused, all their support people. So like, let's say it was a school incident, the principal might be there, there may be a social worker um, that's involved with that family. Maybe there's a grandparent or it, whoever was impacted by whatever happened. Um, let's say it was an assault. Maybe there even was an observer or a person who witnessed it who was disturbed by what they saw. So you bring everybody together to have a conversation about what happened and how to make it right. And so out of that, the people who participate in, not us as facilitators, um, the people who participate in that uh, come up with an agreement. And if the person follows through on the terms of the agreement, then they will not have a criminal record. Um, but more importantly, it's an opportunity for the victim to have a voice, to say, listen, you did this to me and this was the impact and this is not okay and this is how you're going to make it right. And it's an opportunity for the accused, like in order to participate in our program, they have to be accountable for their actions. They can't say, yeah, no, I didn't do that, right? A lot of people think that this kind of service is soft on crime, mm -hmm. but it isn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever harmed anyone before, but it's really hard to sit face to face to them and take accountability for what it is that you did. And that's um, a big step. It's a huge that's step. That's a huge step. The yeah. accountability and the impact you've, you've done to somebody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a really powerful process. Um, it's really way less expensive than the traditional justice system, and our recidivism rate is very low. So our kids, mostly youth, we have, we have adults too, but they tend to be younger adults. Um, are not coming back into the justice system. You know, like it's about five to seven percent, whereas the traditional justice system sits around 25 percent, you know, or, or more. Um, so if a person can really understand and hear the impact of what they did and given the opportunity to make a change and then not have a criminal record and not be like this ostracized uh, person who's just a bad person who committed this crime, um, then they can maintain their community connections. They can contribute. They can, you know, move on. The turn victim feels around. better. They can turn themselves around. That's right. Or they really can. Like, uh, there's so many people that have made mistakes and had conflict or hurt someone else. And if you give them the opportunity to make it right, um, it's amazing what can come out of it. And, yeah. and, and I, I'm assuming you teach them like instead of anger or, or aggression, mm -hmm. there are ways to cope. Yeah, there's That's lots of programs and things that we can support, so we can put in place. Um, a big part of working with the families and with the youth is put getting those longer term supports in place so that they don't reoffend. Maybe there is a need for addiction counseling or mental health support or maybe there's just a financial issue and the person needs that after school job or so we try and connect people with those maybe the parents are just struggling with parenting which kind of leads into another another program that we have at community justice and that's why i got a hold of you too yeah. because you've got online courses for this type of thing too mm -hmm. for the parents and i really like the fact that you said parents caregivers and grandparents yeah. too because yeah, it's great. Yeah, because grandparents often play a huge role and they're worried about their grandkids and how they're doing. Yeah, yeah and sometimes they're the main caregivers as well, it's too. True. It's right. true. It's true. Yeah, sometimes they spend a lot of time or they have custody of the kid or what. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's really um, anyone who's caring for a teenager, concerned about them, and maybe wants some, some skills, some tricks of the trade, some language that they can use, um, a greater insight or understanding into their teenager. A and we run this, this restorative parenting or this triple P yes. course. Yeah. Yes, yeah. let's talk about that. 
Yeah, so we, it starts in May. Mm -hmm. um, we usually do it in the spring and the fall, Triple D Parenting uh, of Teens. And so we've sort of made it as easily accessible as possible. So it's online in May. It's the, the Thursday. It's uh, 6.30 till 7.38, you know, not depending on. It's yeah. not no. long. Mm -hmm. It's an hour of your time. Mm -hmm. um, we're fine if you want to have your camera on or camera off if you want to eat. Um, you know, we have couples that come. Um, it's just uh, the lady who we, we hire as the trainer, Andrea Halliday, is amazing. And, you know, she's got, her, I think, four of her own kids, plus she's fostered other children, and she's taken, you know, tons of Triple T facilitator training. And uh, she's like, I, I've gone to the course. So it's my agency, but I actually registered for the course and took it because I have 16 year old <laughs> kids. And we can't stop learning. No, yeah, you know, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. And like, even though, you know, I'm technically the one offering it, it was helpful for me to take this, this course and learn some, some things that I could be doing differently. Absolutely. And it's over a four week period, I believe. Yeah. It's yeah. four weeks on Thursday. Yeah. So May 2nd, 9th, 16th and the 23rd. And That's it's only right. an hour, an hour and a half of your time. It's not very long. No. Yeah. Oh, and I, I just wrote down some of the things that, that you're going to be, you're going to be discussing on it. It's build a stronger relationship, negotiate boundaries and expectations, uh, deal calmly with conflict, uh, survive the emotional roller coasters because we are talking teenagers, aren't we? Yes. Uh, prepare the prepare for risky situations and equip them uh, to handle life's problems. Yeah. Uh, those are the, the topics. Those are the do. topics that we all cover, in various degrees. Um, when, when, when people register for, for the course, uh, we try and get a little bit of information about what you know they might be dealing with at home. Um, I would add in that we uh, spend quite a bit of time more on anxiety too. Yes. Because we were hearing that, that um, a lot of parents and caregivers are coming and saying, you know, my kid's really anxious or really, and there is a Triple P Fearless program, which mm -hmm. is great, um, that people can go to, but we, we touch on that. And, okay. Is and it interactive? You can ask questions? That absolutely. Sort of yeah. yeah, it's totally interactive. Um, yeah. It's just amazing the little things that you will learn in the course that um, you just wouldn't have of thought of. For example, uh, I was struggling with my teens, like they don't seem to want to talk to me anymore. I used to be like, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars. Yes, yes. <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, I'm not the, the focus of their life. Um, and, you know, couldn't engage or, you know, connect. And it's all about relationship building, right? Mm -hmm. And Andrea just gave the tip that, you know, if you want to talk to your teenager, it's probably going to happen late in the evening because that's when their brains, you know, the sh she does do some brain chemistry and frontal mm -hmm. lobe stuff and how their brains operate. You probably want to talk to them late at night. So I'm, you know, tired late at night, but I would make an effort. And it's true. Most of our most important conversations um, where I'm really actually building relationships, connecting with my teenager is at night. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Or little things like you're cleaning around your house and you're doing your dishes and you're taking your books out and you're doing your laundry, right? You're doing all these things and your kid starts to talk to you or tell you something. Like I would usually would just keep on doing those yeah. things and talk to them while I'm doing it. No. Stop. No. No. Take that time. They want to talk to you. Yeah. You make, if they're reaching out to you, and it might seem might you know, minuscule or not that deep of a conversation or whatever, mm -hmm. but you need to build that relationship. You need to make them feel heard, yeah. listened to, understood, so that when conflict occurs, they know they can talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. And as much as your teen doesn't talk to you, they need you more in their teenage lives than I swear they needed you when they were growing <laughs> they up. Do. They really do. They, they really, really do. do. One of my tricks of the trade, yeah. and I mean, she's 30 years old now, so <laughs> yeah. is we would go for a drive. Okay. You'd yeah. be in a car. Yeah. So you, you, you can't get away or anything like yes. that. It's like we just start talking, and that was some of our best talks was in the car. Know, in the car, you know, and, and if we started having a good car, we ended, uh, could, a good talk, I, yeah. we could end up in Brockville or Ottawa depending on how it was going. It's like, I'm not stopping. Yeah. No, I, hear, I think yeah. that idea is brilliant yeah. because, yeah. yeah, it's true. Some of my best conversations with my teenagers have happened when we're driving in the car. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they can't get away they from, can't get away from <laughs> Although they, you know, it's getting that phone put away yes. so that nowadays, you know, the parents are really struggling with that. And that's actually something that 
that Andrea touches on in the course is the phone issue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, parents, often their go-to for disciplining or punishing a child is your phone's gone yeah. for a week. Your phone's gone, <laughs> right? And that makes sense in some situations. If the behavior is related to, to the what the they phone. did yes. on the phone. Yes, I right? agree. I agree. If it's unrelated, then that should not be the consequence. Yes. That's a hard lesson for parents to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes, for sure, for yeah. sure. Now, how to register to yes. do this? How do you do that? How to register? Well, you can go to our Facebook page, mm -hmm. which is uh, Lanark County Community Justice, and it'll take you to the, right to the link. Okay. And be sure to like and follow us. Yes, that that's, right. that's right. I've got a phone number <laughs> here, too. Is that our phone number? Yeah, one 888 1558 okay. or you can go to our website which mm -hmm. is commjustice.org commjustice.org